Today, we're talking about six of the best mice for PC gaming, and also a guide on what you should look for when you're buying a mouse for your PC gaming. Let's get into it. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Adrian Reddix, and today we're talking about six of the best mice for PC gaming. But before we get into the suggestions, we're gonna talk about a couple things that you should know about mice. This isn't the six best mice of all time. Out of all the mice in the world, here's six of them. So if you just want the buyer's guide, go to this point in the video, but we're gonna discuss a couple things before we get to the buyer's guide. So the three things I think are the most confusing sometimes are gonna be wired or wireless, two, build quality, and three, DPI, wired versus wireless. You have your pros and cons when it comes to wired and wireless. Let's look at wired first. So some of the pros of a wired mouse is that you do not have to worry about battery. You're always hooked up to the computer. Two, you don't have to worry about connection. Sometimes with some mice that the wireless connection can not be as good depending on where you're at. When you have a wired mouse, you're always connected and you always have power. A con to a wired mouse is you can only get as far as the cord is long. So if you only have a six foot cord, you can only be six feet away from your computer at any given time. So if you wanna game from your couch and have your computer display on a TV or something like that, my TV's over here, then you can't do that. You have to be close to the computer. So let's go over to wireless. So for wired mouse, you don't have that limitation of having to be close to your computer. As long as the connection is good, you can be anywhere within that range of area. So you're not constricted by how long your cord is. So a downside is that sometimes, but this is very rarely, connection can suffer sometimes. The technology has gotten a lot better over the past some odd years, 10, 15 years ago, wireless technology for wireless mice wasn't great. When we talk about modern wireless mice, a lot of them are as fast as wired mice. When it comes to well-built, good quality mice, you really don't have to worry about connection as much, but it, it can be an issue, just keep that in mind. And also batteries. They have batteries and they need to be charged. Most of them you can just play while being charged, it's kind of like a wired mice, unlike the Apple Magic Mouse that's unusable. You have to plug it in and just stare until it charges because you can't, it's unusable. It's weird, but we're not talking about that. So which is better, wired or wireless? It really comes down to personal choice. If you don't mind an extra wire, then go with the wireless. So if you wanna have a cleaner, wire-free setup, then wireless is obviously the way to go, but it really comes down to personal preference. One isn't necessarily better than the other today. 15 years ago, wouldn't tell you to get a wireless mouse. They were trash. Today, the quality of wireless mice have become very, very good, and it's really down to form factor. If you like a wire, or if you don't like a wire. That's what it comes down to when it comes to wired versus wireless. The next one is build quality. We in the tech space tend to think that the heavier, the better the build quality, right? But that's not necessarily the case, especially with some of these lightweight mice. Sometimes they have holes cut out because people game differently. So just because a mouse isn't as heavy as another mouse doesn't mean it's not as capable. It's just for a different type of player and a different type of playing style. So we have to get out the mindset that because it's heavier and bulkier, that means it's a better mouse. It just means that they put more heavier <laughs> materials in making that mouse. That's all it means. I'm not saying that build quality doesn't matter and that and having half the stuff isn't a factor. It's just you have to find out what type of gamer you are. Do you like a heavier mouse? Do you like a lighter mouse? Like, what is your play style? So this is the big one. You'll see this number on a lot of different mice, and that's DPI or dots per inch, or you'll see it is dots per linear inch. I don't know why it's DPI and not DPLI, but whatever. So what that means is how sensitive the mouse moves. So the higher DPI, the more sensitive the mouse is. A high DPI means if I move my mouse just a little bit, the cursor on the screen moves a lot more. It travels a lot further distance than a lower DPI. So if you have a lower DPI, I may have to travel my mouse from here to here to move it two inches, where I can just move from here to here and move that same two inches. So the higher your DPI is, the less movements you have to do with your hands. But just because you have a high DPI doesn't mean 
that's the best thing for the game you're playing. So you'll see some of them be 25,000 DPIs, right? So that means it's a very sensitive mouse. But if you're playing a game like Overwatch or some other first person shooters, you don't need a overly sensitive controller because if your controller is overly sensitive. You're moving too fast. You're jerking too much and you lose accuracy because it's too sensitive. You're too all over the place. If you look at some of the most popular gamers, a lot of them lower the DPI so they can have a little more control when it comes to the game and their aiming. It's like having a car that goes a thousand miles per hour. I mean, it's fun to have it, but it's, it's not practical to go that fast all the time. Don't be fooled by, oh, it's 25,000 DPI. Well, what kind of gaming style do you have? Because if you're a sniper, I know a lot of professional people who play sniper, especially in first person shooters, have a lower DPI because they want more accuracy whenever they're sniping, right? Instead of somebody who is more of a in your face, you know, running gunning type person who may have a higher DPI, but it's never 25,000. It's more like in like the two to 6,000 range. So let's get into the recommendations. Everything we're talking about is going to be in the description below. There are affiliate links to help the channel. They're not going to cost you anything extra. But uh, if you see something you like, go below. Get it. Let's get on to the mice. The first one is going to be the Logitech G502 Hero High Performance Mouse Wired. I like this mouse because it has a lot of customizable programmable buttons. So you can do things like have like you have a button to throw a grenade or a button to do a slash. You could have a lot of your actions you use for first person shooters or whatever game you use on here without having to use the keyboard. I also like it because it's very ergonomical. Logitech is very known for their ergonomical designs when it comes to their mice. It has a 25,000 DPI sensor, but as we discussed before, DPI isn't the most important factor when it comes to mice. The most important factor when it comes to a mouse is comfortability and does it do everything you needed to do? Does it have all the buttons you needed to function? Is it lightweight? Is it heavy? How does it feel in your hand? That's what's important when it comes to a mouse, not some arbitrary number like DPI, which is, it's not arbitrary, but it's not as important as it's marketed to be. The next one is gonna be the Razer Orochi V2 Mobile Wireless. It's a very lightweight mouse. It's a very small mouse, but it's not small as in power and performance. You still get the same performance you do out of a regular mouse, but this is ultra portable and it has 18,000 DPI sensor. If you need something that's sensitive, you get up to 950 hours of battery life, but battery life really depends on how you use the mouse. If you're a real heavy user, you might not get as much hours out of it. Or if you're a real light user, you may get more hours out of it. So it really depends on you and your use case. Now for, again, it doesn't have as many programmable buttons as some gaming mice, but for what it lacks in programmable buttons, it makes up for in being lightweight and portable. The next one is gonna be the Corsair Saber Pro Champion Series. This thing is really good. It does come in a wireless flavor, but I like the wired one better because it's almost like a sleeper of a mouse. It has those quick strike buttons that when you tap it, that the button is very responsive. So as far as being somebody who likes FPS games or something where you need that, that clicking, that nice click or that quick, fast clicking action, this is the one for you. The wireless version is a tad bit bigger and you know, it's a little more expensive because it's wireless and you're gonna have all your wireless stuff. But you get the same, to me, the same function in this lightweight game and mouse thing you do uh, as you do in the, the wireless one. It doesn't have a lot of programmable buttons, but for some people who just need it to be quick and fast and have a good responsive mouse, this is fantastic. The next one is the Pulsar Gaming Gears X Lite Wireless Ultra Light High Performance Mouse. Um, what this is, as you can see, if you look at some of these cuts, uh, let's go back here. If you look at some of these cutouts, 
the cutouts make the mouse a light mouse. So if you're a person that needs a very light weight mouse that's fast and it can get the job done, this is a fantastic mouse for you. It does have a 20,000 DPI sensor. And again, DPI is gonna vary on what type of gaming style, what type of gameplay that you do. But I like the fact is the ergonomical design of this. If you look at this robot hand that's right here, you can see that they make this mouse for comfort. It's not like a lot of mouses that thinks everybody's hand is flat, which, you know, you don't grip a mouse like this. The most comfortable way is gripping it like that, right? I love that the, that a lot, not only Pulsar, but a lot of companies are realizing that hands are a thing that aren't flat, that they have a natural curve to them. And that if you make products that feel good in the hand, people want to use them a whole lot more. Uh, it makes sense, huh? The next one is the Rockcat Tyon R3. I think this is one of the best wired mice on the market right now. It has a lot of programmable buttons, has 14 programmable buttons. If you need that many buttons, that's an excellent thing for you. But what I tell people a whole lot is don't just think of if, if you do more than just gaming, think of it as a whole work solution. Just because it says gaming doesn't mean you can't use it for other things like video editing or every or different other types of workflow, even in um, office suites. You know, you if it's something you do a lot of times like highlight or, or whatever it is, you can program these buttons to do a lot of different things. Now, this is a little bit on the heftier side. It's not a lightweight mouse. So if you like a heavier mouse, which some people do, this is a perfect mouse for you. I like it that it doesn't, it's not blown out with RGB. I don't like a mouse that has, that's like a disco ball. It's just all these different colors. It's a very, if you like a little RGB, a little accent, it's fantastic. It's just a really comfortable mouse. It's a mouse that's designed for a hand and not um, a sheet of paper. Because again, hands are not flat they have a natural curve. The next one is going to be the Logitech G303, the Shroud Edition. If you don't know who Shroud is, Shroud is a professional gamer. He got his start on Counter-Strike Go, and he does a lot of Valorant play. If he, He's a very well-known first-person shooter. Again, it doesn't have a lot of programmable buttons, but it does have that Logitech Hero 25,000 DPI sensor on it. So if you need that kind of sensitivity, you have it. Um, what I do like about it a lot is the feet on it. The feet is this white area right here. It's almost like a glass kind of. So the biggest issue when it comes to mice is friction. So the friction of whatever you're using on. So that's why people have mouse pads and things like that. So the smoother you can get the mouse to slide over what surface you got. So the less friction you can have between the mouse and the surface is sliding across, the better the response and the better the experience is on this mouse. So having good feet on it is a essential thing when it comes to mice and this thing, does a fantastic job of that. Again, it's not super flashy, but that's not why you buy this mouse. It's, you buy this mouse to be good and to perform very well when you're gaming. Bonus. So this mouse isn't necessarily a gaming mouse, but in my opinion, this is the best mouse on the market, hands down. And it's the Logitech MX Master 3. It does everything good. Is it the best gaming mouse? Absolutely not. But if you're somebody who does gaming and some other pro some other creating like uh, video editing or just everyday use, then you get you can get no better mouse than this, in my opinion. It does everything well. It's uh, a great build quality. Now it doesn't have the highest DPI. It's only four thousand DPI. So DPI isn't the end all be all when it comes to a mouse. But as far as being ergonomical, um, the buttons itself feel so comfortable. It's such a well built mouse that I couldn't be I, I would be remiss to not add it to the list. Is it a gaming mouse? No. Can it be a great all around mouse that you can use for gaming also? Yeah. So what kind of mouse do you use? Is it wired? Is it wireless? Does it have all those nice RGBs? Does it have 15 buttons? Let me know in the comment section below. That's it. 
Thanks for joining me. If you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this type of video, tell me why you didn't like this type of video in the comment section below. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one.